phrasing. So we're going to jump into data analysis. We're going to start off with univariate. So, or bivariate, sorry. You're going to find that we're going to fly through. There is a little bit of univariate to start just because this is sort of high yield univariate, um, but we are going to fly through sort of bivariate and then we're going to jump into sort of linear modeling, time series, um, and then really financial. And you can see where we're at down at the bottom of the screen. That's going to give us our little subheadings as to where we're at. Um, and there are approximately, just to let you know, there are 114 slides, but the content ends at slide 98. So 98 take nine, there's about 89 sets of content slides to go through. Um, and then we get to tips and then there's just a couple of little slides at the end. So we'll start out, normal distribution. I'm sure you've all been through this, but we need to know our bell curve. We need to know it well. Um, with the bell curve, I think the most important piece of information that you can understand is that it's 50-50 on either side and the middle is mean, median and mode. That has come up before in an exam and you just need to know that they're all the same. When you have normal distribution, these are all the same. This is the middle for median. This will be the average for mean and this will be the most common because it's the highest up here for the mode. Symmetrical, all that sort of fun stuff. Approach is zero on either end. Um, really important to understand sort of standard deviation and the spread. So as you can see here, you're going to have, as you've got here, you've got a mean of five. So if you come back here, you've got a mean of five and you've got a standard deviation of two. So you've got seven, you've got nine, you've got three, you've got one, etc. And as you can see here, it says, all right, what is one standard deviation above? Seven, what is two? Nine, what is one below? Three. Like pretty sort of straightforward stuff, but just understanding our mean and our standard deviation. This is, and why I wanted to touch on this stuff just quickly before we jumped into bivariate. This here, this diagram, this exact diagram that you search up, bell curve distribution, this will be one of the diagrams that comes up on your image, Google Images. This is a diagram that is a non-negotiable in your summary book. Non-negotiable. This has to be in your summary book. This exact diagram is what I ask for with all my students. I don't want you to go... I, I say, feel free to draw your own one out, but this one needs to be somewhere. Uh, and you're all going to be handwriting your summary book. I hope all of you are handwriting. I'm a big advocate for not typing out one. I get it can be better in terms of, you know, pasting things in and all that sort of like, you know, formatting. But it's much better to write one out. You sort of learn as you write. You're not going to learn as you sort of type. It's a really important thing. Um, but this diagram is a non-negotiable for my students and I'm going to make it non-negotiable for all of you. It needs to be printed, cut out and pasted into your book. Really, really important. So this is a non-negotiable. Um, it's around 68% of data um, values lie on this one standard deviation of the mean. Um, and then it tells you, you know, 95 and then 99.7. It tells you how much is lying in between. It tells you the values for each little box here. So you've got your 34, you've got your 13.5, you've got your 2.35, 0 0.15. Um, this is a really good diagram. You don't need to have this stuff here. You just need to have this diagram here. That's all you need. Um, and that's what's really important. Then the last point with this is just have your formula for your standard deviation, your Z-score. So your Z-score does come up pretty frequently. It has come up in most exams at least once in either the multiple, multiple choice or the short answer. There's usually one mark allocated to this for the whole exam, the whole two exams. Um, so it's one mark out of a hundred. There's, you know, it's 1%. Make sure you get that 1%. You want to get every percent you can. So really important. You cover that. <coughs> the other point here is that you can manipulate this. For those of you who probably do, there's probably some of you out there who probably do a little bit of methods, um, maybe some special or yeah, special. Um, this stuff should be pretty straightforward sort of manipulating the equation for the algebra. If you struggle with this stuff, like manipulating the equation to get different things at the front, try and have all the different ones that you can. The other one that's really going to be common is the actual score. You're never going to be really finding the mean or the standard deviation, the things that are given. Um, but if you, you are sometimes asked to find the actual score from the Z score, this is how you do it. You have your actual score at the front, then you have, you know, your mean plus Z score times standard deviation. So let's jump in to types of data and we'll jump into bivariate. So Bivariate means two, means there's two variables, it just means that you've got two things you can manipulate. Um, so obviously if it's categorical, you're not going to be able to manipulate as well, but I find this diagram really, really useful. So this one here, um, I always say to my students, again, have a diagram like this in your summary book, because if it ever comes to, and it's more likely to come to you in a SAC, so those of you who haven't had your SAC for this yet, it's more likely to come to you in a SAC that you get data and you're asked to write it out. You're asked to, to 
display it in a in a graph. It's not really as much an exam question because it's a bit it's a bit varied and you know there's a bit of variability as to how you can mark it and then there's you know it's a bit of a waste of time for an exam. For an exam they're going to give you a lot more specific in terms of how to go about this question. For this this is a SAC type question but I think it's really important to have it in your summary book nonetheless because it could be a multiple choice where they say you've got these two variables what's the best way to display it. So you need to know how to display data in terms of what its category is. So is it a categorical, is it numerical, and then like, you know, your ordinal and your, all those sort of things. So what's really important here is you've got categorical, categorical, you're going to use a segmented bar chart. You've got numerical, categorical, parallel box plots. Um, your numerical, categorical, you've got back-to-back -back stem and leaf, and then you've got numerical, numerical, which is scatter plots. So just going to quickly fly through these. I'm not going to spend too much time on them, but these are how you sort of display them. So you've got your segmented bar charts. You've got two categorical. So you've got your, your cold, mild, or hot, and you've got your year, which is technically categorical, even though it's a number. It is categorical. It displays something. It's like a postcode. Categorical ordinal is really important. Um, as you can see here, you've got um, a key as well. And that's really, really important. The key is super important for segmented bar charts. The other thing that's really important for segmented bar charts is that they stay in the same order. So they go hot, mild, cold, really important. They stay hot, mild, cold. You don't just want to suddenly go, all right, mild, cold, hot. You don't want to do that. You want to make sure they stay in the same order. If you ever are to draw one of these out, you don't need to use different colors. Um, but it is preferred. It makes it a little bit easier to understand. You just need to have them different. So if you're having, if you're using one color, like you've got a pencil and one thing I do not recommend using pencil ever in an exam or a sack. I know you're taught all through your life. Use a pencil for maths because you can rub out a mistake in an exam. No, you want to be using a pen. Well, let's just say for the sake of it, using a pencil or you only have a black pen and you're making a segmented bar chart, just give them, well, that was not meant to happen. Um, just give them patterns. So as you can see here, give them patterns. So the bottom one, I do nothing. The top one, I go like this or the middle one, I go like this. And this one, I go like this and I give it a pattern. And I just give it a different pattern. I that was probably not the greatest pattern to do, but I give them a different pattern. And then in my, uh, my key, I say, all right, this means, you know, X, this means Y, and this means Z, something like that. So you've got yourself a key. So you are completely within your right to do something like that. And it's important that you do differentiate them. You don't just draw out a bar and go, all right, you got this, this, and this. That's not useful. So then two way frequency tables, these are pretty straightforward. I don't think I need to go through them in too much detail. The only difference is you need to have totals on them, uh, particularly on the bottom, uh, but you can also have them on the top because as you can see here, this is more your explanatory variable. These two are your explanatory variables. This is more your, uh, um, independent, your, sorry, your response variable. So these are explanatory and these are response. So really important that your explanatory variable goes on the, the top, your response goes on the side and therefore you need to have your totals at the bottom rather than at the ends, because these are going to be a hundred percent. These are not going to be a hundred percent. So awesome. Um, Back-to-back -back stem and leaf plots. So these are quite useful because you can sort of display two pieces of information on the same sort of the same graph and you've got the same sort of set of numbers. So as you can see here, you've got this being your axis and your axis is kind of staying the same for both of them. And then you just put your numbers in. You can sort of compare trends. You can compare um, everything that you really want to compare here. Trends, um, your shape, your distribution, all that sort of stuff. What's really important about this is that um, it hasn't been displayed here, but you need to understand what is this? Like, is it the age of the person? Is it the height of the person? Is it the weight of the person? Like, what is this? This one doesn't have that, which is a bit of a bit of a red flag. So this wouldn't get you full marks because like, what's going on here? What are we looking at? Are we looking at age? Are we looking at you know, what are we looking at? It doesn't, it doesn't tell you. So you need to have that. And that's one of those key things is giving a name to your graph. So this needs a name. So you need to say, um, the weight of people with blue eyes or the height of people with blue eyes in whatever it is, centimeters. This key is useful, but this key also doesn't explain what is, 
what is the, you know, the units. We don't even have units here. So you need to have in that key, you need to have the units. You also need to have like, what is going on? Like, what is the name? What are we looking at? So this one here would, would lose marks. This would definitely lose marks because it doesn't give you what you need. And again, key is really important. You need to have a key, especially for these ones because one zero could mean, you know, could mean a hundred, could mean 10. Doesn't know. It doesn't really tell you. So one categorical variable, uh, one numerical variable and you have to have them on the same axis again for parallel dot plots. So what I mean by that is you need to have the nines lining up, the tens lining up, the elevens, the twelves, the thirteens, the fourteens, the fifteens, the sixteens. Again, this would fail because it doesn't give you a key and it doesn't give you a name. What are we measuring here? Are we measuring test scores? Are we measuring, you know, beep test scores? What are we measuring here? We haven't been given a measurement, like we haven't been told what we're measuring here. Um, and we haven't been told what a dot refers to. A dot here could refer to five, could refer to five boys and five girls, could also be just one. We haven't been told that. So again, we need a key for this, really important. And we need a name to give context to what is going on because we haven't been given context and without the context, we don't know what's going on. So that's parallel box plots for you. Um,